Hello, good afternoon. Wow, this is very loud. Um, I'm very glad to be here with you. A lot of people have left. I should have asked Bianca to stay with me on stage to make it a little bit cooler, but that's okay. Um, so I'm uh, François Xavier, I'm the Chief Data Officer for JC Deco. I'm very happy to be here on stage for this first edition of uh, the Web Summit in Rio. And we are here to talk a little bit about AI and data and how this is impacting performance and creativity. And when I mean performance, we are not only talking about clicks and impression, we are talking about how companies are behaving and how artificial intelligence will reshape the way we are operating at scale. And before I joined uh, JC Deco, I was working for Meta, where everything is uh, pretty easy when you are a digital native, things are in your DNA. And when I passed the interview, my boss asked me, what do we expect from data? How is it going to change our life? Because you know, all these CEOs, they have these words on their PowerPoint saying data and transformation, and us guys, we have to answer to the challenge. And I told them, honestly, I don't know how to answer your question, what data is going to change. It will be changing, I don't know, analytics, forecast, our capacity to do things better. And I was a bit lost in the answer. And then, after a few months, we were hit by COVID. And a few months later, we were hit by the Ukraine war. And in the middle of all this, we use data. We use data every day, not for the, the, the Ukraine war, but for the COVID. For one day to another, audience were out of the streets and our media was useless. And suddenly, we were looking at the end of the tunnel and there was this little light saying, we are going to reopen. And all the sales guys of the world called us saying, when are people coming back? How many of them? Are they going to change the way they travel? Are they going to change the way they move in the city? And suddenly, data was about answering questions. And in my company, that was essential. So when I thought back about the question, which was, what is data meant for? I finally found the answer. Data is meant to be prepared for any scenario. And that's what we do. We use data to answer scenarios. Let me give you an example. You are a startup and you are selling uh, eyewear. You are selling glasses. And you are doing good. You are looking for investors, you have a few sales, and suddenly, Beyonce post on her Instagram account one of your glasses on her nose. Millions of people on your website. Millions of people are looking for your glasses. Are you ready for that? The scenarios, we are always thinking about negativity and how we have to face the negative waves. But the scenario can be also extremely positive and puts you in the ropes because you are not ready to face these type of scenarios. And if I want to sum up this idea, it's talking about the Black Swan. The Black Swan is a book written by Nassim Taleb. And the claim of the book is how very low predictable events can have a fantastic negative or positive impact on your strategy and your company. And the book is about that. It helps you thinking about the scenarios and how technologies, people, and strategies are helping you being prepared to what you are going to face as a small or as a very big company. And in the end, coming back to the discussion with my CEO, what about data? The first thing I told him is data is not a strategy. Neither is AI. These are means to achieve your strategy. Whether you're a small company, you're a big company, data is not a strategy. It's like hope. Do you imagine when the journalist asked Michael Jordan, hey Michael, are you going to win the league this year? Well, I hope. No, 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 there's no hope. There is work, there is sweat, there is strategy, there is commitment, and that's about that. And you can take this sentence and this approach to everything. Hope is definitely uh, not a strategy. And the main reason why, you can't capitalize on hope. You can't measure hope, but you can't measure the hours of training. You can't measure the size of your team. You can measure the money investment you put in your company, the meetings you make, and that is the key. Uh, to use data at the, right, um, at the right level. And data for us, it's contributing to supporting the business we had and transforming it to the business it has to become. 
JC Deco is an old company, it's more than 60 years old. And we are doing a job which was the same 200 years before, putting posters on walls. And now we have to use data, we have to use digital, we have to use retail data, and we have to transform our industry to fight back with the online media. And that's a key element for us in performance and how data is supporting us. And the reality when I joined uh, uh, JC Deco was that it's not there was nothing. There was a lot of great people, great sales, great marketers, but it was hard to tell them, guys, we are going to do data from one day to another because you can't run before you walk and before having AI, you need data. And what I mean, it's not having like a massive data lake. It's having the right habits. It's having the right governance. It's having the right use cases. It's having the right people. And let me give you um, an anecdote. When we created the team four years ago, I was coming from Meta, and the natural inflection was to hire people I knew from Google and from Meta and from everything. And the reality is that we didn't know shit about the business. We knew how online was working. We knew how clicks and impression and contribution was working. But we didn't know shit about how out of home is working. And it's a very specific media. It's a very complex media to operate at scale. And so we said, we are going to change a little bit of our approach. And we are going to hire people who don't know anything about data, but who know a lot about our industry. And this is the moment we started to use data at the right level. Our use cases were right, our technology approach was right, and we were finally working out the transformation of the organization. And that was a part of the key uh, for us to move forward. Another learning I wanted to share about data and performance is the capacity to adapt. This sentence is from Darwin. The one that is the most adaptable to change will survive. And for us, if you think back about the COVID, that was really a matter of surviving, making sure that you can pass the wave and that you can finally fight back and go back into your discussion. And building up the team to achieve this objective was somehow complex. It was finding the right way to transform internally our company by accelerating at the right pace. And that was extremely, extremely complex. And the reason it was complex is that at the beginning, coming back to where we were coming from, we were coming with stuff which were extremely technical, but nobody was buying it. And we had to change our approach to key and easy concept. And we divided our plans into sites, and we were only using acronyms. For example, our first strategy was called CASEL. CASEL was an acronym for Collect, Activate, Structure, Transform, Leverage, Explore. And that helped people understanding where we were going. Because if the brain doesn't understand, the heart doesn't buy it, and the legs don't execute. And for us, it was absolutely essential that we have this alignment in perception and also this connection with the teams on the field. So in the end, it was a matter of priorities. And despite all the willingness we had to do crazy things with AI and with data, we had to do the priorities in the right order organizing the company to play with data, finding the right people in the company, organizing our data community. And these are the pillars and the foundation to achieve the right performance with data and making sure that when AI pops in, you are ready to embrace the change. And also, another key element is taking care of the consideration people and time. I truly believe what I'm about to say, and I explain this to our bosses, data, it's not a sprint. AI, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Sometimes you need to stop, sometimes you need to drink, sometimes you need to have something to eat because the, the, the next 10K are going to be hard. And our bosses are sometimes a little bit impatient. They read in the news that ChatGPT is here and they want to start tomorrow. We told them, no guys, ChatGPT, we still have a lot of questions about ethics, about the consumption, about the, the real uh, power of the, of the technology. So we are going to start, but we want to be in control of what we are doing. It's a long run, it's not a sprint. And for this, you need the people. And in a market everywhere in the world, data talents is a fierce battle. 
and I can't afford to pay what Meta is paying or what Google is paying for these talents. So you need to be smarter and you need to find ways to retain people when they are in your company. And after these years, the best way to retain talent is the quality of the project. It's making sure that it has a sense and a meaning for them. And meaning can take many ways. It can be developing new skills. It can be answering challenges uh, asked to us by cities. It can be a way to transform a company. But this capacity to give sense and meanings to talents is the best way to retain them. And then, people is a strategy, especially when your future is at stake. Coming back to the COVID period, I truly believe that if we wouldn't have had the people we have in the company, we would have never gone through the COVID. Never. People were committed, they were experienced in their, in their field, and we had the capacity with data to support all this. And you can have the rightest and the clearest data strategy. If you don't have the right people to execute, it's done. And we know so many companies, big, small, and medium, that went through good strategy and bad execution because they didn't have the right people, that we need to uh, take some lessons out of this. And then, talking a bit more about uh, AI now. You all read the news like me, and chat GPT here, and chat GPT there, and there are a few things which we are, well, we are sure. Many other players will come into the battle. It will be Google, it will be Amazon, it will be the Chinese players. So we don't know yet who is the winner. What we know is that we have new capacities in our hands. We have new capacities to go faster, to go harder on what we have to do. And the way we look at AI on the JC Duco side, we look at two things. The first one is what can we do faster and better than before thanks to AI? That's obvious because in this area, in this field, we feel in control. Think about natural language to perform data analysis. What we see here is that we roughly control the use case we are going to elaborate, and also it will tick another box, which is democratizing the data usage in our company, giving access to analysis to people who don't know how to perform it. That's a key element for us. And then there is this other side of AI, which is mostly driven by generative AI. Can I replace my art director? Can I uh, fire my agency because I can do everything at home? Obviously, no. AI will help us on capacities. They will help us do things differently. But it's not going to replace all the jobs. And also, once again, coming back to the marathon, I believe that this will take time. It's not because the technology is ready yet that we can jump on it and make sure that we use it for everything we do. And for us, what is interesting is that we worked on several projects over the last two years. We worked on the metaverse. That's the forest from the promise to deception. There was a huge buzz on metaverse and we were all excited about it. Eh, we didn't know much about it. Some companies are doing very well, but for the moment, it's not really for us. We are looking at it very closely. We'll be ready when time comes. And then from reality to excitement, we were already doing AI for years. Since day one, we are doing AI. But suddenly, instead of having a Renault Clio, we have a Ferrari in our hands. Can we drive it? Are we able to drive the car at the right speed on the right roads? That's the question we're asking ourselves. But in any case, the conclusion we come to, this will be a leapfrog. If you compare our job, which is selling ads and winning tenders with our natural competitors, the Google and the Facebook of the world, these new capacities are offering us a leapfrog. The capacity not only to catch up, but to fight back. And this is how we look at these new technologies. How can we do faster, better, and stronger what we are doing to serve our interests and those of the agencies and advertisers we are working with? The other key element already lightly touch base on this, is democratization. When we started uh, the data adventure, we started with, we were six in the group. Today, we have a team of 75 people. Our data stewards community, it's another 50. And now our whole data community, it's five to 600 people. We are 12,000 in the world, so there is still like steps to, uh, to perform, but I truly believe and I'm convinced that AI will help us when Microsoft is promoting Copilot in the office uh, uh, delivery, that helps us 
putting AI at the core of the proposition. And that helps us also educating our bosses. The key element for us, which was a bit harder on the metaverse, is how do you convince your boss to put money on the metaverse? How do you justify this investment for an outdoor company? AI, it's easier. Everybody is talking about it. Look at here. There is not one speech which is not about AI and chat GPT and everything. So now we have to separate what is the buzzword and what we can actually do with it. But it's an easier discussion for our bosses and with our bosses than what it was before. And this democratization is absolutely limitless. We are going to use it with uh, boundaries, with control, with a lot of our, of our industry in our field to improve our general performance. Another key element that we were having a hard time bridging together was creativity and productivity. Traditionally, when you think about creativity, it takes time. You need to have your art director, you need to have your agencies, you need to have all the talents of the world, make the photo shoot, everything. And suddenly, thanks to the acceleration of AI and the capacities, we can produce faster, better, and cheaper. And that's a key element also in our business. And I believe that um, TVs, even influencer, everybody will be able to create more content to make the change and, and push things forward on that side. But in the end, um, to conclude this uh, 15, 20 minute speech, to infinity and beyond is pretty much the promise. Now we have to execute the promise. And one thing I kept is, yeah, we are going to do AI and produce content with AI and change everything in marketing. In the end, a good ad is always a good ad. I thank you for listening. I wish you a very good day. And thanks again for having me at the Web Summit.